ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start off with an introductory session for those new to contra dancing. And I'd like to invite everybody to participate because this is a great way to uh, welcome in the new folks and model how to do this. So find yourself a partner and make a big circle. If you need a partner, let me know and I will be happy to provide an introduction. So make a big circle. We can see if we can entice some musicians into the center. Well, welcome everybody. This is a very nice semicircle, but let's make it all the way around, please. Now, does anybody need a partner? For this first bit? No? Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how many folks here have been dancing for a while? Please raise your hand. Those experienced dancers, raise your hands. All right. All the beginning dancers, look around at these folks who have their hands in the air, and I hope that you'll ask them to dance. Experienced dancers, hand in the air again, please, just for a moment, so they can identify you. The best way to learn how to dance, of course, is to dance with somebody that already knows how to do it. But there is something that you want to know about, and that is that the band is transmitting a secret message when they play. It's embedded into the music. It's subliminal. And the message that the band is uh, providing you with the band hopes is buy our music. So buy those CDs. As dancers, what you really hear is you don't need your thumbs in order to dance because all you need are your fingers for those eight count phrases. Okay? So we're going to do music 101 here. The band is going to play a tune and we're going to clap on the first beat of every eight counts. Because in the dance, every eight counts, you'll be doing, most of the time, you'll be doing something different. So if you can hear that phrase of music, you'll be in good shape. So the band gets coordinated by playing four beats. They're gonna go bump, 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 and then we'll clap. So let's practice that. Get your hands ready. Bump, 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 bump. Not bad at all. Let's try it one more time. Bump, 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 bump. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think you got it. All right. So each time you're clapping, you'd be doing something different in the dance. Take your hands in the circle. Now circle to the left, you circle left. And back to the right. Circle to the left. You can almost hear that clap as they change direction. And back to the right. Try this, four steps into the center. Four steps back out. Four and four make eight. Do it again. Circle left. Now back to the right. To the left, you circle left. To the right. Into the center. Back out. In again. To the left, you circle left. And back to the right. Into the center. In again. That's it, that's all. Now, I'm very pleased to report that that's really all you need to know to have a great time tonight. There are a couple of things that make it a little bit easier, and one of them is how to hold on to people. So you'll notice that when we were circling, you're all holding on to each other in a big circle. I'd like to take a closer look at how holding on in Contra Dance Land works. So let's see. 
Ellen has just volunteered, and we're gonna, she and I are going to do a little role play. And so Ellen is going to take the role of the experienced dancer, and I'm going to take the role of the beginning dancer. Now the caller says, circle to the right. So hearing those words, Ellen takes off to the right with determination and vigor. All right, let's try that again. Circle to the right. Now, I think what's going through Zen mind, beginner mind is this. The caller just said something that sounds suspiciously like blah, 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 blah. And then this person who has my hand takes off to the right with determination and vigor. And so in an effort to cooperate, I give her my hand as much as possible. And then finally, when I get to the end of my arm, the rest of me comes along with a big pull. Now, the thing is, as an experienced dancer, I know that Ellen doesn't want just my hand to go with her. She wants all of me to go with her. So to facilitate this, we set up a little tension between the two of us. Now, we don't achieve this state of tension by calling each other names or discussing politics or anything like that. Instead, the person on the bottom pushes up, the person on the top pushes down. This is called giving weight, this connection. It's like a resistance. So now, when Ellen takes off to the right, we both move together, okay? So what I'd like you to do is take hands in the circle once again. And I'd like you to return to your state of innocence. Make your arms really loose. Now, the technical term for really loose arms is spaghetti arms. So circle to the left with spaghetti arms. It's kind of a lonely, starchy existence. Please stop. I don't even like to watch. Now, bend your elbows. And what that does is it shortens the circle a little bit. It also makes it easy to give weight. So move back and forth. People on the top pushing on the down, people on the bottom pushing up. And just feel that resistance on either side. Excellent. Now, using this weight, circle to the left. So you're drawing the person in your right hand along with you. Person in your left hand is drawing you back. Circle to the right, you're switching. Now the person on the left, you're drawing them along. Now if we were on the west coast, we could say that you could feel the energy in the circle, but here we are in New England, so it's just good dancing, okay? So if you don't know what the figures are, if you don't know what's, going on, what's happening, but you know how to give weight, it's great because people can lead you around. However, if you don't know how to give weight, what happens is just your hand has a good time, okay? So what I'd like you to do is when you're dancing, just feel that resistance. It's a very useful tool. So now you know how to dance with the music because you know the rule of eight, and you know how to dance with each other because you know how to give weight. The third thing you're gonna need to know how to do is swing because you'll be spending between 25 and 50% of the time swinging somebody. So to get started, what I'd like you to do is this. Take two hands with your partner. Now give weight with your partner and you're gonna circle to the left. But hold on for just a moment before you do. Look at the human foot here. You'll notice the human foot has a pointy end on one end and a stubby end on the other. If you point the pointy end in the direction you wish to travel, you have millions of years of evolution on your side. So I highly recommend pointing your toes in the direction. So, circle to the left with your partner. You're holding each other up. Now, great. Okay, and stop. Take ballroom position with your partner. I have some volunteers here who are gonna show you what the ballroom position look like. All right. First of all, you'll notice that they're both smiling at each other. That's a good thing. All right. The next thing is you'll notice is the gentleman's right hand is on the woman's left shoulder blade, okay? And the gent is not trying to leave a lasting impression on his partner. The hand is nice and flat, and it's really good to hold on right at the shoulder blade because it keeps you connected there. Now women, your right hand, left hand is on the gent's right shoulder. This is not the best time to practice your ner Vulcan nerve pinch. Instead, your hand is nice and flat and you're holding on to each other. You're helping hold each other up with these hands. All right, so it looks like this. Now these hands here are called your pointer hands. Very shortly, you'll be spinning around each other very quickly, and there'll be forces acting upon you, trying to tear you away from your partner. These hands don't do a whole lot. It's all the gentleman's right hand and the woman's left hand that holds you together. These hands are nice though, because when you finish swinging, if you point your pointer hands in the direction you're gonna go next, you'll always be on the correct side. Now naturally, women, you're always on the right of your partner. Gents, you're always on their left. 
whenever you're doing the next thing. So, assume the position, please. And now walk around your partner. You're holding each other up. You're giving weight here in the ballroom position. Great. And you're following your own left hand. All right, very good. So, what I'd like you to do is take your partner into the center, please. Bring your partner into the center. Come on in closer. Come on. There we go, excellent. Come on. I want you to get used to what it's like, gonna be like in about 15 minutes here, okay? So what happens at a dance is this. The music will be playing, you'll be having a great time dancing, and then the music's gonna stop. That's a signal that that particular dance is over, okay? So what I like to do is acknowledge my partner. So I'll turn toward my partner and I'll say something like, thank you very much. Why don't you all try that right now? And now, it's live music, so I highly recommend acknowledging the band in some fashion. So you turn toward the band. And then, if you're like me, you'll finally remember something really witty you want to share with your partner, so you'll turn back to where your partner was. But they'll probably be gone. Now, the reason for this is, is that people know it's going to be a contra dance next, and so they're off finding a partner. So if you want to do more than just this first dance, you have to know how to ask somebody to dance. So this is what you do. You go up to somebody and you say, may I have this dance? There's two things that person might say. They might say, no, thank you, in which case I usually say something like, perhaps another time, and then I'll go and ask somebody else to dance, because over the years, I've found it's better not to inquire as the underlying reasons for the refusal, but just take it at face value, they don't want to dance right then. Most of the time, people will say yes, in which case, you'll take your partner, and you'll form up or join a line. Now, we have some folks modeling a contra dance line right here. Actually, there are two sets forming up. The gents are facing the door you came in, and women have their back to the door. So I'd like you to take your partner right now and make long way sets. Let's make a set on the other side of this middle one, and then join into the other sets. 